Hi and welcome to another video from Man and Machine. My name's Sean, I'm one of the cam experts here and today we're going to be having a look at some mill turn. This won't be a deep dive so we're not going to cover absolutely everything but we will add a couple of turning toolpaths to this and then go through adding some milling toolpaths. Um, so let's jump in and have a look at what we're doing. So as we can see in the simulation that's running in the background, we're adding some turning toolpaths so we're just going to add a face and a profile. Then we're going to go ahead and mill these flats we're going to mill the pocket and we're going to do some drilling on the top surface. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now first off, the first thing we need to do is set up our job. So we're going to come up to our ribbon and click setup. And it pops open the same window as every operation we do. So let's go ahead and change our operation type. We're going to be doing some mill turn. Now once we get into this form, um, turning a mill turn, there are a few things we first need to do. We need to set up our uh, axis of rotation. So we're going to say this rotation. I need to flip it as I want to be on this end. My X is the wrong, so let's change X. I'm going to use this circle, which we can do. And we change it normal to that circle. Uh, everything else is correct. The next thing we need to be conscious of is the actual shape of our component. So as we've got this pocket here and these flats, from a profile view, we can see that these dip in and this is obviously not flat because the extremities of that are the same diameter as this circle so what we need to do is tell it that this profile is spun so it draws a line across the top of this edge we'll find the extremities of this hex and make that the same diameter as this circle as this um, radius here so we turn on our spun profile it won't show us it's a spun profile until we start actually machining that's everything set we're not going to worry about changing the stock or the post processor as for what we're doing that's fine so let's accept this job so now we have our setup first thing we're going to do we're going to add a quick face on again i'm not going to change too many options these are just to clear the material away so when we run a simulation of our mill turn part we can see that the um the milling side is um, doing what it's supposed to be doing so now we're going to add a profile this works the same way as turning I'm going to say I want it to be doing no axial grooving and I want it to be confined between the front face, so the model front, and a selection which will be this geometry here. So there we can see we've got our turning toolpaths in, we've faced it, and as we can see from the side view now we can actually see what that spun profile is doing. So it's actually running across the extremities of this part finding the extremities of this hex and creating a toolpath to the extremities of that hex. It's exactly what we want it to be doing. So now we're going to start adding some, ta some, some, some milling toolpath sorry, to our part. So let's go ahead and we're going to do this flat first. So we're going to use for this 2D contour. So the first thing to do, as always, change our tool. Let's go ahead and choose this 12mm flat. The next thing to note, our tool orientation is incorrect. It's fine if we want to machine, say, a hex on the front, but for what we want to do, I want to machine the orientation from the top so that my tool is normal to this surface. So let's go ahead into our geometry. And the first thing we want to do is change our tool orientation. So the first thing it asks us for is a z-axis, so a face that we want to be normal to our tool. So I'm going to select this face, and as you can see, it turns white and shows that our selection has been accepted. X is fine. Next, we're going to choose our geometry. So I want to choose this edge here. Checked, check my arrow to make sure I'm on the correct side of my arrow. We can click this and this changes the direction. So we're on the correct side. Now I'm going to change my height. So I'm going to say I want this tool to be going from um, a selection. So the height of this can start from here because we've profiled it. And I want it to go to the selected contour Z bottom. One thing I do want to do though is say that my retract and my clearance height are from the stock top. Just for clearance when the tool comes up to make sure the tool is out of the way of any movement it needs to do. Next we're going to go into our passes. I know that this face is 20mm long. So I know I need to do multiple, multiple cuts. So I'm going to use roughing passes of 9mm. I want to do two roughing passes. I want to change my finishing to be 0.2 and that's everything in that page <coughs> excuse me now in my linking tab I don't want any radial 
linking him. I want it to be straight and I want it to be 10 mil long. So we're just adding a linear lead in so we come across here. Let's have a look at what this looks like. It's not bad. We've got this lift in here. I'm pretty sure I can take this away. So let's go have a look. Edit this. In our passes, we can turn on both ways. In our linking, we'll tell this to keep the tool down. Accept this. And as we can see, the tool is now going to just, it's going to do a conventional cut on the way back. As long as the material and the tool is fine to do that, why not? But this is aluminium, I'm just going to say it's aluminium. So we can see that that toolpath is now running here, going around and coming back. Now we could go around and do the same thing for all of these faces. Go through all of that effort. We could we can create a derived and go through this process. But there is one other thing we can do. And that is we can make a pattern of this toolpath. So I need to pattern it around this, around this axis six times. So I'm going to come into my ribbon and click the folder pattern. That is going to create a folder called pattern. Stick the toolpath you've selected in it. And we're going to make a circular pattern. We're going to choose the axes of rotation. So we're going to choose this axis. As we can see, it's already giving us a preview of two toolpaths. If we hold it not to keep the original, it only show us the new toolpath it's creating. We want it to keep the original. We want them to be equal. We want six instances of those of that toolpath. So let's accept that. And as you can see, it's put our toolpath, our single toolpath, into this pattern folder and patterned it around six times. This can be also handy if you've got holes. So let's say um, a design change comes along, they've added a hole in here. We can create that toolpath and add it to our folder. It works like any other folder system. You just add anything to it. So if I wanted to add this profile, for instance, to this pattern, I could. You wouldn't really want to, but you could. Let's go ahead and take that out again. So we can drag and drop. Um, toolbuffs into and out of a pattern. Now what we're going to do is going to add this pocket in. <coughs> so let's go and add and use 2D pocket. Firstly again, change my tool to a smaller tool. I'm going to go into our tool orientation, choose the pocket flat as the Z normal. It's always the best practice to do so just in case it may be a different orientation to say these hexes where you think it could be the same orientation as this but it's not. X is fine. I'm going to choose our contour. I'm going to choose again the flat of the pocket as this confines it to the model geometry instead of um, the contour, which we could then choose either side of. Our heights, again, we're going to say I can go down to this height to start with. Passes this time, we want to make sure it's only doing a 4mm pass. We want to add a finishing pass of 0 0.2. And on my lead ends, I'm going to say I want it to be 5 degrees, no more than 1mm above the job, and no more than a 2mm diameter. Now this diameter works on increase, it adds this to the tool diameter, so it's a 6mm helix. We'll accept that and have a look. I've done it in one pass, okay, I want to do it in multiple passes, so we'll go back, we'll edit, passes, multiple passes, did it 1.5mm passes, and accept. So that's better. We've got our pocket doing in three three passes now. Now we'll go ahead and we'll drill these holes. And again, it works the exact same way. We choose drill, select our tool, into geometry, tool orientation first. Choose the axes of this hole. Check your axes because this has actually turned it the wrong way up. I'm going to flip it. Select the holes, and this would actually become quite apparent once you start selecting the holes. This wasn't flipped, it wouldn't show you the holes that you're drilling. Drilling is quite good for that because it actually gives you a live preview. And to our heights, check our heights, hold top, hold bottom, that's fine. And our cycle, we want to use this deep drill with a two millimeter step. So there we have a very quick and easy bill turned part. So that's it from me. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like any more details on HSM or um, any more details on the capabilities of HSM, um, you will find some other videos on milling, turning, 3 plus 2 and 5 axes. Um, or if you want to have a discussion and have a, a live demo, 
um, please get in contact with us at Man and Machine. I'll leave our details up at the end. And again, thank you for watching.